Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Coin Geek Weekly live stream. I am your host, Mr. Kurt Wilker Jr., broadcasting live from the pit at the South Florida Bitcoin Citadel. Uh, we got Brandon Ward at the control board, rocking and rolling. Uh, He's uh, looking a little sleepy, did a little, uh, looking a little uh, like he's got some hockey on the brain. So uh, go Panthers, I must say, as an official uh, Floridian now. Uh, I don't watch a lot of any sports, but uh, as a fresh Floridian, all my neighbors. So, okay, funny, funny story to start this out. I had my neighbor say, hey, how about them Panthers, huh? Now, to me, I'm, <laughs> I'm immediately like, do we have a do we have a problem with large cats? Like what what are we talking about, right? And then um, shoot, what team what team do they beat? Uh, I think it was the I think it was the Maple Leafs. This is like a month ago, and so he says something like, "Well, yeah, they're killing they're killing the Maple or they killed the Maple Leaves last night." And I'm like, I'm st- so completely have no idea they're talking about hockey, and I'm like. Are there maple trees down here? I've definitely seen some oak trees, but why would the Panthers be harming the maple trees? And he's like, he's like, hockey. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so, I mean, it was like, it was the biggest bimbo moment I have had in a very long time. So uh, my neighbors realized that not only do I not watch the sports ball, I also do not watch the, uh, the sports puck. So to my sports fans, I love you. It's great. I'm happy you're happy, but not my thing. So, uh, but 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 I'm excited. I mean, why not? I'll I'll be a Panthers fan. So, anyways, segue. If you're watching, first of all, thank you. If you could like, subscribe, hit the alert bell. It uh, helps the the algorithms on the YouTubes and the and the other social medias let them know that you care about my show. And if you care about my show, it will show my show to more people who might also care about my show. So this is this is the way we win slowly. So again, like, subscribe, hit the alert bell. And again, if you're watching live, share it across social media right now. So put it on Twitter, put it on Facebook, put it on Twitch. Is Twitch still down? Twitch might still be down. So, uh, But if you could put it on your social, let them know we are doing a live episode today, as I normally do. But we are also doing an Ask Me Anything. We had guests that wanted to come on the show, but it's my last show, not leaving, I'm not retiring, I'm not quitting, I'm not dying, but it's my last show before the London Blockchain Conference, londonblockchain.net. If you want to come see us live, we will be live at the QE Center starting on March 31st and going until June the 2nd. I'm going to be on stage every day of the conference talking about all kinds of things blockchain related, so please come out. Tickets are mostly free. Uh, unless you're Bitcoin Magazine, and then they're extra free, and you get to be my VIP guest because I love you guys. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit smack about uh, my my interactions with Bitcoin Magazine in a few minutes. I will get to that. Uh, the cluster that was Bitcoin 2023, uh, you you couldn't have believed it could possibly get any worse than than Bitcoin 2022, brought to you by Cash App. But holy cow, they pulled it off! What a show, everybody. Uh, so we will get there. Uh, the QE2 Center. Thank you, Alex Moon. Uh, even when you're not here, you're you're here anyways. So uh, we we had a really interesting time down in Miami. You may see I'm a little more tan. I spent a, a bit more time in the sun. Uh, but cue up your questions. Brandon Ward is going to be the 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 check valve for whether your questions get published here on the bottom of the screen for me to answer. I can talk about anything. Uh, we can keep it Bitcoin related, but really, I will talk about anything. I promise you that. So uh, please put the questions in the troll box. If you can get them past Mr. Ward, well, then we're, we're, we're all living big, everybody. So <clears throat> before I start with my anecdote about Bitcoin 2023, we're going to play an ad for London Blockchain, just in case you haven't seen it yet. And if, if you have, well, uh, I guess I'm sorry, but please share also. Uh, if you're anywhere on... The planet, you should come to London. It's really easy to get to London if you're anywhere on planet Earth. If you're outside of the uh, the atmosphere or possibly outside of the galaxy, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. But if you can't figure out how to get to London, um, I don't know what to tell you. So, uh, Mr. Ward, let's queue up the ad. Let's give it a play. We'll be right back in about 30 seconds.
All right. Welcome back. So I'm, I will start with my anecdote. Please queue up your questions. I will get through all the questions. But holy crap, was Bitcoin 2023 in Miami an absolute wrecked ass nightmare? Uh, so the night before I went to the shitcoin conference, which is objectively better than the Bitcoin conference in, in, in every way. OK, so uh, shitcoin people are 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 selling drugs freely and openly. Everybody's by the by the you know midway through the night, everybody's drunk and high. Uh, it's 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 a riot. It is an absolute spectacle. It's a little bit more like uh, going to a, a street like street festival in Toronto or something. Oh, yeah, there was an interesting level of, of Canadian participation. Also, a lot of a lot of people that are oh hey yeah you're uh, you're from uh, I know you I knew you from the Coin Geeks right and um, that was, so that was interesting. But uh, okay, so shitcoin was great. Uh, I debated Kyle Kemper. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know who Kyle Kemper is, he is actually um, he is Justin Trudeau's half brother. That's right, the Prime Minister of Canada. Maybe, maybe that's why there were a lot of Canadians there. Uh, but Kyle, Kyle rolls in hot. Uh, he left Canada a number of years ago over the COVID stuff. Doesn't doesn't appreciate his brother's policies as the Prime Minister. Imagine, imagine your brother becomes the president or the Prime Minister of a country, and so you leave the country. This this is their relationship. But uh, so Kyle. Um, was on stage with me. We debated big block versus small block Bitcoin. It's hosted by Erica Gemma, who's a, an old colleague uh, and, a, and a friend. And um, we had a really good time. So we talked. We were slated for about 30 minutes. Um, the crowd was clearly uh, a little bit ticked about my, my advocacy for big blocks uh, to the point where they were uh, unsure. Like they were unsure if I was kidding, but after the 30 minutes, uh, they actually demanded that we stay on stage because they were having so much fun, like the audience. Uh, and we were taking audience questions. We were going back and forth. And um, it was a lot of fun. So, so we literally talked about how all this stuff going on in the BTC uh, realm, this, this ordinals related stuff, uh, it's literally data on chain, tokens on chain, colored coins, and how it's an indicator that the big blockers were right. Um, so I, you get the typical, like, what about nodes? What about, you know all this other stuff. So I'm answering the basic questions from the audience, people that want to, you know, say, hey, well, doesn't decentralization matter and blah, blah, blah. All of that will be published at some point. Uh, the conference was nice enough to film it all. Uh, and, and it was a lot of fun. But it was like seriously uproarious. I also got to meet uh, Vit Jitleka, who's the president of Liberland, uh, the newest country in Europe. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, who else was there? I talked to some Wall Street Journal uh, reporters about a couple of things. Uh, and then a, a, just a bunch of really interesting uh, sort of crypto industry people, a lot of people that are bullish on the tech and um, really just uh, a fun group of people. Like it was a genuinely fun time at Shitcoin. Uh, this was in stark contrast uh, to going to Bitcoin 2023 the next day. Uh, so I went with uh, a, a few of the, my, my colleagues, uh, Zach Wiener is one who you would know. Uh, who who had a good time? We were, we were dropping one sat ordinals on people uh, at the show, and it was it was a lot of fun. So I get to Bitcoin 2023, thinking, okay, this is like my th my third year in a row, but I've been to a couple others too. I've probably been to five Bitcoin conferences now since like 2015. I've probably been to five of them. Yeah, yeah. I went to I went to 17. I went to 19, 20, 20, no, uh, 17, 20, 22, now 23. So maybe that's, maybe that's four. Maybe I've only done four. So anyways, um, <laughs> so I get there, I got my cameraman as, as I do my microphone. I, I do my man on the street interviews as I've done in the past. And, uh, but this year, which normally like a sea of people, it is like, you're going to any major, rock concert or uh you know whatever you're going to country thunder or something like there is crowds of people like the parking is destroyed the streets are all blocked there's people uh you know guiding traffic everywhere there's a massive line and checkpoint and all this stuff out the door uh that's what that's what bitcoin conferences look like every year that i've gone this year we get into the parking lot directly across the street from the venue 
It was the same venue as last year. Uh, it's the uh, Miami Beach Convention Center. And parking's half full. Like, okay, this is convenient. I'm only on the second floor. No big deal. Well, I guess we'll just walk down, walk across the street. No real foot traffic to speak of. We go inside. Nobody really inside this massive rotunda. I mean, the rotunda area has got to be 100,000 square feet. Um, there may maybe was 200 people in this 100,000 square feet. So it feels like a, a mall on a Tuesday at 11 a.m. kind of thing. Like you could fit a lot of people here, but there's not a lot of people here. And so we get through security and I'm like, all right, I guess I'm just going to start asking people questions. You know, this is stuff I do like, hey, what do you, you know, what, when did you get into Bitcoin? What do you think of Bitcoin? What is your, uh, you know, what's, what's your opinion on uh, something that people always like underestimate or something people don't understand. What's something that surprised you about Bitcoin when you learned it? Uh, then I started asking a few questions about like block size and ordinals and hey, you know, it's been a wild year this 2023. Um, you know, some blocks have had 12 coins in them. What do, you, what do you think of ordinals on chain? Every single person that I talked to uh, was either in the mining industry in some regard or they were just fans. They were like degen Bitcoin kind of people. And everybody universally was super into the idea. They're like, hey, this is awesome. It's good for my business. It's been good for my portfolio. It's been, it's been good for like everything in the world is, is, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on out there. Like my home might be collapsing. My portfolio looks like shit. My, I'm never going to get social security. The dollar's collapsing. I've bought the most expensive dozen eggs of my life. That kind of thing. And then ordinals like some of some of these people like if you bought ordy 60 days ago if, even if you spent 50 bucks on ordy tokens you're a millionaire today okay and so the real business people the miners the you know the people that are actually doing this work they're they're making a, a ton of money on fees okay so uh everybody's excited about it everybody who i talk to is excited about it as i'm interviewing people and i interviewed not a ton of people but a, you know a couple dozen people pass me by have a have a little chit chat right um <laughs> so i'm there for maybe an hour hour and a half doing a little bit of b-roll a little bit of, hi this is kurt wilger jr live at 2023 you know do, doing the whole thing like they got their bitcoin sign i'm doing a little bit they had a coffin full of fake fiat currency like they do every year uh, actually last year it was a dumpster uh, but it's the same thing so it's like hey is fiat currency going away in the next six months 12 months 24 you know like so i'm just sort of shooting like my my exposition shots the way that I, I normally do. And then we we get this, uh, so I start bumping into people. So I bump into uh, Chris Rice, who's an old uh, crypto podcaster, old buddy of mine. Uh, I bump into uh, Randy Schwartz and his buddy Ryan, who are uh, longtime Bitcoiners up in the New York, New Jersey area. Uh, but they're B, like BSV ally guys. Um, Another five or six random people. Uh, Kyle Kemper was there again, so I bumped in. I was talking to him. Uh, so I'm I'm starting to accumulate like a small crowd. It's not a big crowd. It's maybe ten or twelve people. Okay, but but the rest of this area is dead. There's nothing else going on. And then there's like twenty, probably twenty or thirty people that are at the actual entrance, like the checkpoint for getting into the paid portion of the conference. Who are just sitting there like if you have a qr code they'll actually give you a wristband and a, and a badge that kind of thing but nobody's really going there because it's not busy and i have this crowd around me and we're all kind of talking we're milling around now i had been denied a press pass ahead of time like i, I applied for one i didn't get a response back i reached out hey can i get a can i get a press pass i'd really like to cover the show like i have for the last several years in a row keep kind of not getting a response out of bitcoin magazine i'm like I wonder, like, is this, is this, is it a personal thing? Is it political? Is it because I'm a coin geek? Is it, you know, it could, could be a lot of reasons why Bitcoin Magazine uh, may not get back to me with a press pass, but whatever. Um, so I get there and I'm, I'm, I'm going to walk over to the press desk. After, after we finish getting a bunch of interviews with people, this is, this is where the drama starts, okay? And there was some drama. So I, I walk over to the press area uh, after like the first hour and a half or two hours of me just getting like my exposition shots and talking to a few people in the in the rotunda and the street. And then uh, as I'm walking to the press desk, and again, with my sort of mini entourage of like totally unorganized entourage, by the way, like people that just were like, hey, it's Kurt and kind of uh, we're, were hanging out. 
Um, and this guy is coming up and clearly coming to like cut me off as I'm walking to the press desk. So he's in, you know, the, the regalia. He's got the, the Bitcoin magazine black outfit because he is in charge of the desks. And uh, he he's, comes and cuts me off and basically says, hey, Kurt, what, like, what, are, what are you doing here? <laughs> to which I'm like, okay, first of all, this guy knows my name. So this is already like, here we go. <laughs> and um, I, I turned and look at him and was like, what's up? Like, can I, like, what, how can I help you? You know, I don't remember exactly what I said, but he's, he says something like, what, like, what, why are you here? Can I, can I help you with something? Like he's, he looks very visibly triggered by my presence. <laughs> okay. And so, um, so I just said, well, uh, well, who are you, first of all? He's, oh, I'm, I'm, I think he said Michael. I can't remember if it was Mike or Michael, but he looked more like a Michael than a Mike, if you know what I mean. And he says, um, <laughs> he says, well, I'm, I'm Michael, the, the head of, uh, the head of, uh, I think he said media relations. It was either PR or media relations for Bitcoin Magazine. I was like, oh, great. You're the guy to talk to. Uh, I have requested a press pass a couple of times here, and I would really appreciate it if, uh, if I get a press pass, he's like, well, Kurt, okay, here's, here's where we're going to go with this right now. Okay. So I'm getting the like, okay, I'm talking to the hall monitor here. And, um, so he says, Kurt, you know, a coin geek as, as an altcoin publication would be really insulting. If I gave a press pass, uh, to you, it would be insulting to our, our real media partners. The, the Bitcoin media would feel undermined in, in some way if if this alt coiner was just here with uh uh with a press pass you you have to understand where i'm coming from <laughs> i was like i so i literally laugh i'm i'm i was like i i i so I, I try to give him the benefit of the doubt i was like you're kidding right this is a joke no i'm afraid this is serious you you have to understand where he says again you have to understand where we're coming from i was like well, I get what you're saying right now, but I'm I'm shocked you're serious. So uh, he he kind of he's like, well, you know, that's the the, the decision is final. <laughs> so I was like, okay, like whose whose decision is this really? Is there somebody else I can talk to? He's like, it's it's me. I was like, okay. So I take a step in. I'm like, so so Mike, this is this is your call. <laughs> he's like. Yeah, this is my call. You can buy a ticket. F feel free to go purchase a ticket and come in as a, as an attendee. <laughs> I was like, I was like, well, that that would be convenient for you, you know. Said, said something snarky back and and said, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, if if you if you're not interested in having me as a guest, then I'm not interested in giving you my money. So I reached out my hand. I shook his hand and said, Hey, man, like have a like have a good conference. Good luck, right? And so I walk out and, and all like, there's a little bit of background. Like I get some people, uh, there was a, a, a lady I was with who I had met, uh, the night before who was like, Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Like she was an older Israeli woman. So she's, she's like beside herself, the, Oh my goodness, the, the censorship, the, the, what, you know, what is this? What is happening right now? Like why, why would, uh, cause, you know, we had, had a good relationship. We had, had a good talk and, and she's, she's saying like, why, why wouldn't you let Kurt in? He seems he seems so nice, you know? And then uh, Randy and Ryan, who are both very sort of New Jersey, like hat and jacket and just kind of, oh, hey, oh, why why are we doing what? We're not going to let him in, you know? It was just very, uh, yeah, su su super just a scene, just a scene and a half going on over there. And so I shook Michael's hand and was like, hey, man, like, good luck. Took off. On my way out, <laughs> like, so I turn around, uh, this rotunda is pretty big, so I'm going from the the press pass desk out the front door, walking toward the front door, and wouldn't you know it, I cross paths with Jameson Lott. <laughs> so uh, Jameson, who has been um, a little unpleasant to me in the past, I, I must say, uh, super, super like mean slash tough guy vibes is how he is on the internet, right? So I'm walking by. Uh, Jameson's probably five, eight, real big beard on him and, and, and slender. Like he looks like he's keto. So like not a lot of mass to him. Definitely not fat, but also not skinny fat, like just skinny. 
Skinny guy, big beard, five foot eight. In a pinch, he could use one of my Hawaiian shirts as a sleeping bag. Like, this is the size of the man, right? So he, he crosses paths. He, he takes a very quick, like, eye contact glance at me. I give him the, like, you know, hey, Jameson, like, like, just say, like, hello with my face. I didn't even actually say anything. He, like, darts the eyes away, goes long. Like, we would have not exactly brushed shoulders, but we would have walked within three feet of each other if we stayed on our paths. He goes, he goes super wide. He's doing the, like, 10 or 12 feet out, out the other direction. I was like, oh, I, I literally just said, come on, man. Nothing. Wouldn't look at me and whatever. So I'm like, okay. I am the most triggering man at Bitcoin Miami, apparently, uh, at least until Eric Wall and Udi Wertheimer took the stage the next day. But holy crap, like was it just everyone just dripping like bitchy beta, like, uh, like Karen energy, like you're on my grass. Don't you see the sign? Like it's just that kind of like, uh, like who are you people? Like there was a time. There was a time when Bitcoiners, A, were super intellectually honest and interested in a fight, like interested in, in an intellectual battle to like, I will discuss anything with anybody. We are so confident in who we are as Bitcoin that I will, I, I, it doesn't matter who you are. I'll debate Peter Schiff or, you know, whoever, bring them in. And it has turned into the like, sir, you've officially invaded our, our safe space. And I just don't even, like, if, if I could revoke your press pass any harder, I would. And it just was, like, so just mind-boggling to me. So I walk out of the place, like, shot a, um, shot and said, hey, well, I just got thrown out of Bitcoin Miami. Uh, good, you know, good luck to him, basically. And, uh, Holy cow. Like, it really, really was just, uh, it was bewildering. And, and like, the, so that was it. We just, we just shot it, said, good luck, uh, you know, wrapped it up. I helped my cameraman put the stuff back in the, in the truck, and we took off. So uh, went home early, got, got to see the wife and kids a little bit, and um, it was funny. So on the, on the way back, uh, we had a contingent at the Ordinals Conference, which was another neighborhood in Miami, and it was the exact opposite energy. Uh, uh, the The feedback I was getting from that was like all energy, like excitement. People are making money. People are building things. People like people literally also again laughing at the like monumentally colossal cringe that is the official Bitcoin conference. Which again, just a year ago, just a year ago, this place was huge, big energy, big, big, big energy, big names, big crowds, big stuff, big announcements. This year it was, they're attacking the chain. These, this, is, this is an attack. We're under attack. Are we under attack? It just was like unbelievable. But the Ordinals people, like it truly, I mean, it was, it was the people that saw the value of Bitcoin the way that I have for like the last five or six years now in exile, right? So from exile, I'm saying, hey, Bitcoin's capable of this and that and this and that. It can do all these things. Like it can literally be the ownership of real assets on chain, everybody. And ah, that's a lie. That's a scam. And now people know it. People see it. And you can't put that genie back in the bottle. And holy crap, are the Bitcoin magazine people and all the small blocker maxis trying like ever living hell to put it back in the bottle. And I'll tell you what, it's not going back. It was a fantastic uh, little piece of research journalism for me. Uh, like maximum cope <laughs> from the small blocker side. And uh, yeah, they need their safe space to protect the ridiculous narrative. It was. In fact, I think I said something about enjoy your safe space on the way out to, to, to Michael. So, <laughs> um, gosh. So that was my experience in Miami, everybody. Uh, yeah, they have indeed lost their way, Mr. Ward. Uh, so if you're watching the show, first of all, thank you. I have enjoyed recounting the melting of the snowflakes. Uh, they picked a hell of a city to go be, uh, to go be snowflakes in, but they, they did it. Uh, if you're watching, please, with the questions, the comments, blessings, curses, grapes, gripes, grobes, please put them in the troll box. 
If you can get them past Mr. Ward, I will answer your questions about Bitcoin conference, Ordinals conference, Ordinal stuff, once at Ordinals protocol here on BSV, which I'm super excited about, London blockchain. We can, we can talk about anything you want, really anything you want. So I'm going to take a little bit of a, uh, of a, of a throat break here because I've been uh, kind of hissing and shouting here a little bit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink my water. And we're going to watch another ad for London Blockchain Conference. I'll be back in about 90 seconds. Industry shifting ideas can start from individuals or people committed to solving global and industry issues. This is your chance to network with experts and connect with a future collaborator at the London Blockchain Conference. Throughout history, significant innovations have resulted from successful collaborations. In 1903, brothers Orville and Wilbur Wright made it possible for us to achieve our dream of flying. In 1977, Steve Jobs' marketing flair and Steve Wozniak's engineering magic helped jumpstart the personal computer revolution. In 1990, Tim Berners-Lee worked with systems engineer Robert Cayo to pave the way for the World Wide Web. The world would look very different without the innovations of these incredible collaborations. Come to the London Blockchain Conference, where visionaries like yourself convene and create value partnerships that could lead to future collaboration and the next world-changing solution. And we're back. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, yeah, let's let's bang out some of these questions. Brandon, rock and roll. What we got? Were there any talks on ordinals at BTC Miami? Because it's all anyone talks about on Twitter. Yes. So I think there were maybe two major highlights. Well, there are three major highlights. So the things that have actually come out of the conference are uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. Uh, announcing that he will be accepting Bitcoin BTC for his presidential campaign. And he's super hot because he's uh, super anti-COVID vax, which has played really well to the, the sensibilities of, of those folks. And um, so that was a big announcement. The second one was actually uh, Michael Saylor, of all people, talking about he feels the same way. He feels the exact same way as I do about ordinals, that, hey, the, the opportunity to own real assets on chain yeah, and I'm talking, you know, equity in real companies or, 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 you know, real paper commodities, like these kind of things. Uh, if NASDAQ could move their business to the blockchain, now he doesn't realize BTC can't handle that kind of volume, but, but he's fundamentally right about the idea that ordinals really matter because of the opportunity to actually own real things on chain. Uh, and he was talking about that on stage, which again, like when, when Michael Saylor uh, starts undermining your narrative, you can, you can feel all the guys who, you know, literally wanted to like smell his feet three months ago. Uh, now those people are all like hyper cringe too. Uh, and then the best one, I think by a pretty wide margin was when uh, Udi Wertheimer and uh, Eric Wall were on stage in their wizard costumes saying the same thing. Like they are gooning on uh, the freaking the dweeb in his mask. Uh, what's his face? Uh, Shinobi, who frankly kicked off my media career. Uh, he, he brought me a lot of... Um, Brought me out of, uh, into the limelight by by wanting to debate me. Uh, so I debated him with Peter McCormick. Uh, now, gosh, three maybe three and a half years ago, uh, me and Connor Murray uh, debated Shinobi and Peter McCormick, and he's just a just brutal. He still had his camouflage UASF hat. He's wearing his mask because he's Mister Privacy, and uh, basically just wow, it's just trash. It's just garbage, and you know it's going to go away, and blah blah blah. Super funny, just the whole thing. Uh, but no, ordinals, ordinals related conversations and RFK Jr. were the only notable things from the entire conference that I uh, that I saw happen on stage. Of course, there's always good stuff happening if you go into the vendor expo and you talk to the miners, like people that actually have uh, businesses in the space. Like those people are interesting to talk to. But uh, it was it was incredible. It, it really was like all ordinals or nobody gave a crap. So that was pretty funny. Next one, please. What's the disconnect between the BTC ordinals peeps and the ones at ordinals peeps? Uh, so, okay. Um, it's funny because ordinals is, 
is the most contentious thing in Bitcoin in a long time. Frankly, I think there's another civil war coming. I think it's crystal clear that we are going to have another like 2016 to 17 era sort of shake out, fall out. You're out of the tree house. We're all going to war. Everybody, you know, cyber, cyber attack stuff. I think it's going to get really nasty and there's going to be a split. I see no other way around it than for this to, to actually happen. Um, to that, like BSV, I mean, we've been, we've been talking about this now for four years or more. I mean, the, the, the power of data on Bitcoin, the power of a SAT that has extra underlying value because of the power of Bitcoin to tokenize. And so we've all disagreed on these protocols in BSV. So we've had run and sensible and stars and, and all these other things tokenized. And, um, we're actually going to be discussing this. I'm going to, I'm going to be hosting a panel about tokens, by the way, uh, really looking forward to it. And we're going to discuss it like, Hey, what, like, why should, or shouldn't we coalesce under one? Do we need a different protocol for fungible tokens? Should we be, should we have multiple, uh, multiple things or should we all coalesce under one and then build, you know, stack up. And it is a, it's an interesting conversation, but where we all agree, the BSV people, is that tokens on chain are fundamentally good. The ownership of on chain assets is a fundamentally good thing. Now, JPEGs are, are largely what we're seeing, but I, I think it's a really good proof of concept because what's on the line other than the JPEG? We can learn the difficult lessons with uh, you know, pictures of punks, and then we can, we can reorganize the universe uh, based on the lessons we've learned by uh, screwing up some of that stuff. So I think that's a fundamentally good thing. Um, is there going to be compatibility? I, I think that there's opportunity to have cross-chain compatibility in all kinds of ways that BTC and BSV ordinals can work together, especially at a community standpoint. Um, in fact, we've seen it. The BTC ordinals stuff has been dominated by people that cut their teeth in BSV. The ordinals wallet is run by the people that ran Twitch and Rare Candy. OrdSwap is run by the people that ran RelayX. Uh, we've seen Unisat run by the people that ran uh, Sensilet wallet and Sensible, to uh, Sensible Protocol. And so these are people that fundamentally understood how to do tokens on Bitcoin. And then when BTC presented a like, hey, we've got a ton of liquidity and stuff over here. Who's going to come grab it? It was the BSV people that were capable of pivoting because they weren't lazy, entitled hodlers. They were people that built their asses off and, and knew how to go take advantage of this new token economy. And so there's, there's a, a lesson there, frankly, uh, you know, not to, not to sit on your ass, and not to, not to just feel like, the world owes you wealth simply because you front ran, you know, some, some other thing. So uh, big lessons there and a lot to learn. Uh, I, I think I answered the question. Next one, please. What's the difference between ordinals and other token standards on BSV? Why the ordinals excitement? Um, so a few things. It, so ordinals, ordinals is really simple, first of all. Like the, and that I think is really key. Uh, if you look at sensible tokens, sensible never really worked very well because of the way that it would chain transactions together. Uh, they actually were calling for a hard fork upgrade to the network in order to make it better. And in fact, uh, this is largely why things like Novo Bitcoin and Radiant exist is both of them arguing that like, hey, we actually need these to be minor validated tokens, uh, but they require a, a hard fork in order to make that happen. And so they kind of hacked their way into it uh, and used an Oracle system to try to simulate it. And then it ultimately didn't work very well uh, because they designed it with a hard fork in mind, which is like pretty unwise, but, um, but it was a cool idea. There was a lot of cool things going on in the sensible token ecosystem, uh, but ultimately it made it that they don't scale well and that, that ended up being their undoing. Similarly, uh, run tokens is a JavaScript element that is in op return. So op return is like a big empty slate uh, and a run token is a bunch of, of script put in there that processes, but you need a secondary indexer uh, that is doing that work. So the, the coin, um, or the token rather, is the script. Uh, it uses Bitcoins for, for transacting, for moving them, but ultimately you need the run indexer uh, in order to make any sense of it. Otherwise it's just gibberish. So then Stas came along uh, and Stas was this, hey, okay, we're, we're going to be all on chain. We're not going to need a secondary indexer. Um, it's, it, you know, this is going to so solve all these problems. You're not going to need to trust a secondary API. You just need to trust Bitcoin. It's just as scalable as Bitcoin, blah, 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 blah. So 
I, I don't love Stas tokens, and it's really it's for one reason. The, the reason is, is that the scripts are very, very large. So um, Tal, for example, had their node default uh, settings were too small for Stas scripts initially, because Stas scripts are so big that when you make a Stas transaction, uh, they weren't hitting the, the major nodes on the network because the major nodes on the network just had their default policy settings. And so actually only Gorilla Pool was mining Stas tokens for a little bit because we had just wider swim lanes. Um, is that good or bad? I don't know that it's necessarily good or bad, but it requires a lot more processing power in order to have them work, which is itself maybe not the most scalable idea. Like you really want your token protocol to be really lightweight if you want it to be as scalable as Bitcoin. Bitcoin already requires a lot of signature validation. Uh, so you need really powerful servers to do, you know, 50 million transactions a day really requires you to do 50 million signature validations, which is difficult to do inside of a, a 10 minute block time, given the way the network is set up right now. Now, if you set it up with greater efficiency, well, then that becomes easier to, to, to scale. But Stas is not particularly efficient in the script validation sense. And so Stas. Uh, has a little bit of a struggle there to get over um, to get over that hump, at least in my opinion. Now, tokenized, the way that they've gotten around that, oh, also, Stas does need an indexer. Uh, th there wasn't supposed to be a Stas indexer, but then when it finally was released, like, hey, it needs an indexer too. So it was a little bit like, mm, so what, what, what are we talking about? Uh, the other interesting thing uh, was tokenized. So tokenized looked at that situation and says, uh, like, we'll just be the agent. We will do that indexing. We're not going to act like indexing is like a passe or secondary thing. We will do that indexing at very high speed. We'll do your processing. It will speed up the process of all of those things because we're just all agreeing. Like, it must be done. So why not do it uh, in a way that isn't like, quote unquote, permissionless? Like, we're just going to agree to have the secondary layer. Uh, I actually really like this design. This is like the secondary ring on the man mandala, basically. So you got your blockchain at the bottom, you have your Bitcoin script uh, one level up, and then above that, uh, in interacting with the, with the script, you have your tokenized tokens. And, and the, this is a pretty good system. Here's what I like about ordinals. Uh, conceptually, an ordinal is just a Satoshi. Like, that's it. There's a little bit of extra logic that tells you that it is a colored coin. So think of it like a penny, uh, that you have uh, put a little bit of artwork on a penny. It's still a penny. It still has the numismatic value of the penny. It still has the face value of the penny. But it also has the extra added artifact value of whatever the art is. Okay? So um, with that, again, a little bit of extra script, but the indexer is really lightweight. Um, and, and so they move at, you know, some infinitesimally less efficient than the Satoshi itself but really, really efficient relative to these other things. So uh, it is a really novel way uh, to handle tokens. Now, because it's so simple and because it's essentially just a sat, well, then it allows you to apply some of these other concepts uh, that we've all become accustomed to, these open social protocols. So this is like map, B, B map, uh, all the stuff at like Bitcoin schema.org. You familiar, uh, familiarize yourself with it and realize like, oh, okay, so we can use Ordinal's tokens as SATs for authentication and, and some of these other things. So it becomes a really powerful system because the token is not big and complex. It's actually very, very simple, which makes it more scalable, which means your other things in the upper rings of the mandala can interact with it in a really simple and predictable manner. Uh, and so that's what we're seeing as, as really exciting from, uh, from people in the space. So... I think that's most of the token protocols. I think it's all the ones that, that kind of matter right now. And, uh, and that's where we're at. Next question. What's more likely to happen? Ordinals force core to stop block size limits or do they leave for BSV? So this is an interesting one. I think, I think there's a couple of things. The scariest one is that BTC splits into the small blocker chain and the ordinals chain and the ordinals chain, if they switch, that they raise the block size, eliminate script limits, and, and a couple of things. Then all of a sudden, they're really diluting the mind space and the good ideas that BSV has come up with. And that is a possible outcome because there will be more hardware, more software, more mines, more liquidity in that space. 
And if that new chain has the bigger block size and script, uh, you know, even, even just partially turned back on, like that becomes a ripe new ecosystem with a lot of liquidity that would really make it, um, make it rough for BSV to say, hey, you should come over here. Now, I don't think that's going to happen, which is why I'm still bullish here. What I think will happen is that the BTC people who have invested just an incredible amount of money into social engineering, uh, that Bitcoin is Bitcoin is Bitcoin, and you know that it is because BTC is the ticker. I think that those people still have a lot of control over a lot of things. Now, it's they've definitely gotten a good kick in the shorts, and they've been taken down a notch, but I still think they're the highest guys on the totem pole. Maybe that switches. Maybe that switches quickly. Like maybe Ordi ends up being a you know top ten coin on coin market cap, and like the Ordinals people are all billionaires now, and then you know then that scale tips. Uh, but I, I I don't know if that's going to happen, and it's it's really hard to predict. Uh, I mean, who could have predicted that this is the predicament that we'd be in, right? But um, yeah, I, what I what I think happens is it just becomes a civil war again where it seems like the good guys are going to win and then there's just a backstab from out of nowhere like you wouldn't believe and nobody could have seen it coming and then i think a lot of these people end up saying okay like we really really tried here and this is so frustrating can we please go somewhere where we're welcome and where they're welcome is in the bsv community in the big blocker community and you know then they bring their projects they bring their liquidity uh, the other thing is the persistent split, this notion that there's a persistent split. I think there used to be this notion. I, in fact, I think Amori Sachet is famous for saying, like, we all get the dividends. Uh, it is good for all investors when, when the coins are split. And it's not. We have seen for sure that uh, when coins split, they do not both grow, but in different directions. We have seen everything shrink. There is less money to go around in in the fork wars so ultimately um i think it would be awesome to see the people come our way uh, especially when you get into the position where there's like there's patents and there's there's all this stuff there's all this ip um in the bsv space that would then be violated by ord chain over here if they decide to split separately so um it's gonna play out i will keep you guys updated but but frankly we're in uncharted waters in a big way and uh it's pretty exciting times next question, please. How are the guys at Ordinal's Wallet and Twitch doing any juicy details about the Miami agreement? Uh, so Josh, uh, Josh Petty is the CEO of um, Ordinal's Wallet and Twitch and Rare Candy and all, all of that stuff over there. Uh, he's super excited. Um, he's very stoked about what happened. Uh, l letting me know, like it was him, you know, saying stuff to me about Miami agreement. Hey, like all these, all these people really want to take Bitcoin back. Uh, so there's there's really is some uh, serious revolutionary vibes going on in the space, um, and 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 I think a lot of it was kicked off by Miami. Miami was a punctuation point in in the war on Bitcoin, and uh, Josh is excited for it. Uh, so is the rest of the team. They're making a bunch of money, so they're very excited. Their devs uh, and their executives over there are are getting a payoff for the for the years of work that they've done. So I'm super happy for them, and they're excited for the next phase. They want to see it blow up they want to take over the world and they want to see bitcoin take over the world now i'm not going to go doxing anybody's grand ideas but there's a there's there's stuff going on so uh pay attention to the miami agreement we we could see some some seismic shifts next one any pre-london news to share like terranode new startups eu regulation updates um i really wish i could talk about terranode because there's a lot of really cool stuff going on with the terranode team um, Terranode as a concept has been around now since 2018, maybe even a little earlier, uh, like right around the Bitcoin cash split era, uh, from BTC. Actually, there was guys like, um, uh, well, actually Amori and guys like, uh, Johannes, uh, Vermorel and, and some of these other folks that were super into the Terranode idea, uh, then the BSV BCH. Uh, split kind of stifled that, and then it was uh, in the hands of Shatter's team for a while. And I, I think, um, I think just a lot of things going on at Enchain and BA, and a lot of the reorganization and a lot of the legal stuff, I think kind of made it that like nobody was really able to focus super hard on 
on the goal. Uh, and that's a little bit like, you know, um, but this has been retooled and recalibrated. I, I, I have to give a shout out to the, uh, to the leadership over at Bitcoin Association for like taking a step back, reassembling the right team and putting them on, on path with Terano because uh, the stuff that I've seen now is, uh, is super exciting. So I don't know if there's going to be any mention of it at London specifically, but um, please know that uh, we we are bullish on the Terranote again. Um, as for startups, yeah, there's there's absolutely going to be uh, a number of announcements. There's a lot of stuff going on with like uh, stablecoin stuff. There's new. Um, uh, they, they just saw a little bit of news coming out about Jimmy Wynn, who's a name we haven't heard a lot recently. But uh, there's there's some stuff uh, going on in that space, and and yeah, I think we got uh, we got some got some goodies coming up for you. But I'm. Uh, I'm going to be hosting a token panel. I'm going to be hosting a panel on uh, layer one versus layer two solutions. Uh, I'm going to be doing a Bitcoin 101 presentation, which is something I've been pushing for for years because I, I think that uh, there's a lot more beginners than there are advanced Bitcoin people. So I'm excited to do that. And um, yeah, uh, either way, I, I, I hope to see you there, Mark. It's, it's, uh, it's good to see you. Next one, please. La, 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 la. What is actually the best business and value proposition for Bitcoin serving hard needs of clients? Either save money by doing things more efficient or doing stuff fully new. Uh, so I always say this. I've distilled Bitcoin down into if you need reduced payment friction or increased data integrity, there's an opportunity for Bitcoin. That's it. Uh, so what do, what do we get from that? Well, valuable art on the blockchain is a really good example of that. The market is telling us that it wants that. Uh, I think another really crystal clear one is is the Serta hash project. I think the Serta hash project, and full disclosure, I have a little bit of equity in Serta hash because I think it's such a good idea. Um, but Serta hash is is doing um, hashing uh, data, log data of your server to the blockchain every time something happens in in your network environment so that you know if your data gets exfiltrated somebody tries to scrub your logs you know immediately that your log has been attempted to be scrubbed and that is an invaluable piece of information to somebody in a security environment and so something like that where the integrity of your data is is made so much more secure by simple micro payments like that is such an incredible value proposition now you can also talk about all the other basic stuff like cash Use, using Bitcoin as cash, doing like the Roger Ver thing. Like, you know, hey, we can just, it's the best money in the whole world. You can use it at the grocery store. You can use it at the, you know, it's like very, um, like that matters too. But that's not going to happen until liquidity makes its way into, into Bitcoin BSV. Uh, and then it's tokenization. Like, could we put uh, digital assets like digital dollars on a blockchain? Like, yes, but it needs to be a frictionless blockchain. So, um, lots of those things. Now we have focused on scale first, scale and integrity, because everything else is irrelevant if it can't scale. Um, now everybody else focused on liquidity, so they got more money than us. Well, puts us in a weird predicament. Um, but yeah, th those are the basics: payment friction, data integrity. Let's make it happen. Oh, UPS man's gonna walk in. It's gonna be a good time. Next one, please. Hello, sir. I'm going to sign for a package live on the air. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody. Next question, please. Oh, it's the Gorilla Pool Flyers for the London Blockchain Conference. Uh, any thoughts on the BSV pump last week as BTC transactions were really expensive and Binance halted withdrawals? I uh, actually, I have no idea. I, I kind of think that it had something to do with the uh, BSV, um, BRC. So, okay, this, this is a tongue twister. BRC20 tokens are a fungible token protocol built on, um, built on Ordinal's protocol on BTC. Now, somebody made 21 million BRC20 tokens with the BSV ticker so that you can buy tokenized bsv on btc and i think maybe that's what was pumping because it did pump at the same time and then i think perhaps there were a lot of new people coming in that didn't know what the heck they were looking at and saying hey this thing's pumping where can i get some bsv maybe not being aware that one is uh one is just a token one's this actual asset and whatever else 
So that's my theory. I don't actually know. I, I literally have no idea, but, um, but that's my theory on it. So that's all I got. But so actually, now that I think about it, BCH also pumped at the same time, which kind of undermines my own theory. So maybe people are out there saying, hey, do we need a, a scalable big, big block Bitcoin? If that's the case, we all win. Where can you buy BSV nowadays? So this is, this is an increasingly difficult question, given that Bittrex was the place that uh, we were all really enjoying, and now they have said uh, we're going bankrupt and leaving the U.S. entirely. Um, I think right now it is possible our only real option as Americans is Rock Wallet. Uh, I use Rock Wallet myself. I am not sponsored by them, but I have, have attested to the fact that I am a fan. Uh, I think Rock Wallet is a nice product. If you have issues, and I have had issues, their customer service is freaking awesome. So, uh, so far, best option I've seen, having a good time with Rock Wallet. Uh, the fees are reasonable, given that they're the only people in the space that uh, make it happen, but that's where we're at. Next one. Do you have an estimate on how big the BSV community is compared to others? Um, that's pretty difficult. I think it depends how you define community. Like, are we talking active people on Twitter? Or are we talking people that have Bitcoin, just the, like their coin holders? Because that's a lot of people. Um, I don't know. So I guess we'd have to define the metric. I would, I would guess it's a few thousand actual people that know what BSV is and know something about why it matters. Like that's probably two to 5,000 people globally. As for, um, you know, who's like in the space working on stuff, like that's probably 500 people. So, you know, 300 of which work at Unchain, right? Um, but, but no, there's, there's, I think it's bigger than a lot of people assume but it's going to be considerably smaller than, um, you know, the Ethereum community, for example, who is, you know, they, they, they probably have 2,000 active developers that are just doing stuff, working on projects, whatever. Then you get your, like, Ethereum investors. Well, that's a lot more people. And then if you get to, like, BTC, it's like, well, BTC is in, like, Paul Tudor Jones's stuff or, like, the Harvard endowment and things. So it's a little bit like, okay, so are we talking... Investors, builders, advocates, culture, a little bit of a tough question. Next one, please. We've got six and a half minutes. What's your take on having ownership over our records on Bitcoin instead of registering them with the state or government corporations? I, I love this, actually. Um, in fact, one of the things that we've been working on here at the Citadel, our, our team, we have a couple of teams of people that are working here full time. They're kind of independent BSV uh, businesses, so like we work together, but not necessarily in the same company, uh, is is discussing that. Like, okay, how do we do something like that? How do we get attestations of identity? And then once we've established identity, attestations of, of ownership and, and all these other things. Like there's a lot of um, legal and philosophical principle that needs to be traversed and decided upon and then standardized in order for this to work. Uh, but we are working on it. It's something that we think is really important. And um, yeah, I, 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 I'm personally, I'm a huge advocate for this. I, I would love to be able to uh, get paid directly to my wallet. I would love to be able to vote directly from my wallet. I would love to have like direct democracy. I would love it to be my library card. I'd love it for, for it to be my passport and for everything to be hashed uh, and all of that. And then I then would have the ability to revoke uh, the existence of these things. Like if I wanted to not have my medical records on chain anymore. You can spend the token, kill the token. So uh, things like that. Um, yeah, big, big fan. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there. AI, chat, GPT is shaking market. Seems to have woken business up to the possibilities to optimize. How do you see blockchain playing into what feels like a moment in time? I think the biggest one is, is check valves on data. You need to know what data your AI is accessing. Because if it accesses everything, like let's say your AI only gets access to like the, the missile launch codes and 4chan, okay? So then all of a sudden you have like a 16-year-old autistic Nazi militarist. And then how, like how do, how do you put that back in the bottle, right? So 
I think now this is obviously a, uh, a facetious example, but, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Stupider things have happened. And so if you have check valves on your data and, and the AI needs to make a payment in order to access certain data so that we know for a fact in a totally separate database, hey, this database that cannot be corrupted has a record of this AI has now accessed this information I think that's a really important thing to be able to, to see. That's just one way. So I think using keys for authorization and using uh, Bitcoin as a way to gain or revoke access to data is going to be like just colossally, crucially important in the near future here. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunity there, especially with how much money there is in the AI space. If you build an AI tool, I mean, you're, you're a fundraiser's dream right now. So. Uh, don't don't be afraid to tinker with it. Uh, go raise some funds. Go build something that can only be built on BSV. We're going to save the world. Three minutes left. Let's go, Brandon. Uh, do we count many ETH devs, but not many really using it, especially as electronic cash because it never can scale? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're literally just doing tokens, DeFi, and, and exchange trading. Like, that's what's happening on ETH, period. There's some other good ideas. There's a lot of actually really good ideas on ETH. And people go there because like liquidity and community. And then they realize like 18 months in, I actually had an ETH guy come to our meetup, uh, the BSV meetup like a month ago. And he had this exact thing. He's like, hey, we planned this drop on 420. And we were going to mint these, these coins for this dispensary or you know some marijuana industry business on 420. But the cost of the mint was more than the value of the token they were going to give away. So what could have been profitable lost the money, period. And so he was. that's literally why he was at our meetup. It was a major Ethereum development group, not just a guy. It was a, it was a company that focuses on Ethereum development saying, hey, my customer was pissed because this is the nonsense that happens. So it's, uh, it is what it is. So um brandon let me know a little bit more about what you're putting in the private chat so i i talk about it. where where can they learn more where is the where is the thing etc uh so we got about two minutes left everybody do we have another do we have another question is brc20 the end of erc20 i really think it could be so uh people don't like erc20 people don't actually like eth nobody wanted eth to exist it was literally the small blockers that created all of the stuff that brought us away from Bitcoin. As soon as Bitcoin tokens showed back up in BTC, everyone's like, I'm out. I'm going there. This is where we're going. This is what we're doing. Um, I think this concept of fungible and non-fungible tokens on Bitcoin with the biggest proof of work, with the most, uh, you know, Lindy effect and blah, 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 blah. Um, that's exciting. It's way more exciting than ETH. ETH is actually really poorly designed. I don't like ETH hardly at all. So, um, and a lot of people don't. And once you tinker with it, you realize like this thing is a very, very complicated Rube Goldberg machine. And BTC, for all of its flaws, is a lot easier to work with. Uh, they're going to freak if they ever make their way over to BSV because everything about it is exponentially better than everything on, on BTC as well. So everybody, as I wrap up, we got like less than a minute uh, here. So come to London Blockchain. Uh, you come live in person, we got this whole thing, but also if you go to LondonBlockchain.net, you can register for the virtual platform. So we're streaming everything every day. There's a, there's a virtual, uh, expo floor. So, uh, all the presenters, you can go like, check out their booths virtually, uh, do all that cool stuff. And then you can watch the show live at LondonBlockchain.net. Um, this is going to be my last show for like two weeks. So I am flying to London. We're going to do the whole thing. I'm not going to do a show next Tuesday because, frankly, uh, I'm going to need to be helping prep for the show, give my voice a little break because I'm going to be talking for three days straight. Uh, and then after, I'm going to be doing a little bit of extra traveling. Um, so we won't be doing a show the next week either. So this is Kurt's summer break that I've earned. And then um, <laughs> and then I'll be speaking at uh, the, what is it, the B2029 um, I think it's a MetaNet talk. I don't know if it's a MetaNet talk, but we're doing a talk over in Berlin at the uh, the Berlin uh, hub over there. So check out B2029 as well. That's going to be happening September 9th through the 11th, I believe. Uh, so if you're anywhere in Central Europe and you would like to uh, to go do that, um, that'll be a good thing. But, but London Blockchain first. Go to LondonBlockchain.net. 
I'm going to be on stage a bunch, and then I'm going to be hosting CGTV. So CoinGeek TV has done uh, multiple conferences now. I'm going to be probably the primary host. I don't know who else is going to be there. It's probably going to be uh, Becky and Stephanie and Claire and some of these other uh, folks who I'm really looking forward to seeing too. Uh, but yeah, so that's it. You're watching the CoinGeek Weekly live stream available across all of the internets. Check the tubes for, for the CoinGeek content. I am your delightful but very bald host, Mr. Kurt Walker Jr. If you could, again, like, subscribe, hit the alert bell, share the stuff across the internet. If anybody can go find Michael from Bitcoin Magazine and let him know that he got talked about on my show, he'd probably really appreciate the attention. So uh, everybody, uh, remember, don't melt like a snowflake, especially if you're going to be in Miami. And uh, I'll be seeing you in London. I'm Kurt Walker Jr. reminding you to be good to each other. Goodbye.